This is such a disaster. Oh, come on. We got a stripped out hole. Isn't ATF mostly detergent? Welcome to a continuation of flushing the Borg Warner Flashomatic push button automatic transmission in our abandoned 1962 AMC Rambler. Has not been on the road since 75. We're trying to change that. You know, I don't even want to talk about it. I just want to get to work here. If you haven't seen the previous videos leading up to this, it's all linked in the video description. If you haven't seen them, they'll, they'll blow your underwear off. Let's get going. Let's work on this. Ah! At the end of the previous video doing this flush, I put the drip pan back under there, didn't I? Oh my gosh. Yeah, I guess I just didn't quite have it in the right spot. <laughs> no! Oh, and if you go back to the previous video, I remember I was telling you how I thought that we could do this job real fast. Real fast and probably not spill very much. Jeez Louise. Oh my goodness, it's even worse from this angle. It is just the very next morning after the end of the previous video flushing this transmission. We'll use my semi hubcap just to build a little dam here. And uh, I'm pretty much going to call that good because I don't want to, you know, make a ton of dust under here. And, uh, yeah, oh, whatever. We'll just dump that out there. I, I don't want to make a ton of dust and have it float up inside the transmission. You know what they say, you live, you learn, you get loves. Oh wait, that's a disposable diaper ad, isn't it? Bucket is full of brand new transmission fluid that has been flushed through the transmission, but filtered out through the cheesecloth. So we are going to pump that back into the transmission to continue our flushing, which we flushed the converter in the previous video. I think we did two flushes with two gallons. I wanna start pumping that back into the converter but I want to throw a battery in the car and we're not going to start it, but we're going to crank it over to spin the converter to try to break up anything else that could be sludge and gunk that's trapped in the converter. Clear all this off the hood because we got to open it, keep our cheesecloth clean. And we're going to put a battery in here so that we can uh, crank this puppy over. Oh, these are the scissors that I may or may not have Stolen from inside the house in the previous video. That's still a secret between us. All right, and one more thing about the mess underneath the car. Where there's no proof, there's no criminal, okay? Somebody else might have done it. No milk today. It's a fun guitar song. My magnetic work lights that I love so much. Throw one of those in there. This battery. Stole it from a perfectly good working Chevrolet. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm going this way. Okay, we're about to uh, hook up our pump, get pumping and crank the converter over. And why do I squeeze past this thing for the last two days? And it's in my way, but for some reason, I just don't move it. It weighs two pounds. Rambler baby, you are going back on the road. We just need to get you flushed because we love you. Oh, that's not helping at all. That did nothing. <laughs> We're gonna get rid of this piece of plywood that caused us problems in the previous video. There was a reason why this was under here. And there's also a reason why this old Harley Davidson mirror was under here. Um, I can't really quite think of or remember what that reason was, but if you go back and watch the videos, I'm sure you figure it out. I'll probably watch, rewatch them myself too. Just uh, because I'm kind of, <laughs> kind of curious what I was thinking. If there's any sludge, crud, any junk like that, that's hidden in little nooks and crannies, you know, the transmission fluid is probably just flowing right past it. So that's why we want to turn it and to get things to fall out of place and then get washed out, flushed out with the fluid. Excuse me. Squeeze me. 
Okay, I had to steal my, this is my go-to travel do-all toolbox. My main current one at the moment. I had to steal this from another vehicle. Gotta have duct tape, point set, tire plugs, all that kind of stuff. Okay, here's my remote starter switch. That's what I needed out of here. And this is at least as old as this car, I would say. About the same. Get this out of here. I turned this light off and forgot to turn it back on. Okay, on this car we put one lead onto the green wire on the starter. Okay, and then we hook up positive and our negative. So we're grounded. That goes to the positive. Okay, a little test. Okay, there we go. All right, now before the car burns down, let's get pumping out of our bucket here. And once the fluid is coming out the outlet tube for the torque converter, then I will bump the engine over and you keep an eye out down here. You watch and you let me know what's going on. If it's, if it's just a massive explosion, the code word is BJ and the bear. Oh, well, I guess that's code words, but... Or how about this, the code word? All right, no, that would be three words. I was gonna say Big Daddy Kenworth. And of course, we're full of air. And in the previous video, I didn't really, you know, do proper procedures, you could say, for bleeding the air out. I've just been kind of doing this. <laughs> just cause we're, 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 we're in a gosh darn hurry. I need a Dr. Pepper and a Diablo sandwich and make it fast. Okay, we're flowing a little better now. Once this gets cooking, it'll start coming out of the outlet tube. Remember, as soon as it starts coming out, I'm going up top and you yell. You gotta be loud if we need to shut this thing down. Oh, I mean, that, does it really matter? I mean, at, other than not wanting to lose $20 in transmission fluid on the floor, it's not like we're gonna make, well, yeah, I guess we could make a bigger mess. I probably shouldn't talk right now. Okay, well, we're coming out the outlet. We'll wait for a little bit steadier of a stream. I mean, we got time. So we'll wait for a steadier stream and then I'll go up there. Okay, it's picking up a little bit more. It's a pretty good solid stream, I can dig it. All right, John Lennon saying, don't let me down. And that's what I'm singing to you. Let's hit it. I'm actually gonna join you down here. Cause I wanna see this. I have a feeling we're gonna go through that. Oh, we got a little over a gallon left I can see in the bucket. Looks like, I, be I bet we're gonna go through it fast once we start this. Ready, here we go. Ooh, that definitely was a change. Oh, that comes out fast when you do that. Let's hold it for a couple seconds. Okay, I was gonna say, I wonder if anything's plugged up again, but no, that's flowing pretty smooth. Let's do it some more. Let's, let's break up that crud inside that torque converter. I think the fluid changed colors. <laughs> That's cool. Let's do it some more without beating the snot out of the starter from 1962. And uh, well, no, we're, it's, it's 1962 right now. So let's just keep cranking on it uh, without, just without burning it up. When this gallon's through, we will uh, strain it through the cheesecloth and see what we find in the fluid. See if this uh, spinning the torque converter over uh, has done anything for us or not. It has never come out that smooth before. It's coming out way smoother out of that uh, converter outlet than it did in the previous video, that's for sure. Now you're ranching with Freeman at Freeman's Garage. I love it. I'm loving it. I don't feel any need to stick a screwdriver up into that outlet and probe for sludge as we did in the previous video. How many times in this video am I gonna say previous video? And you know what, one day this video will be a previous video. Wrap your brain around that. Hang out with me up here for a second.
Now, first let's uh, pay homage to Sears. <laughs> I miss you, Sears. <laughs> Here, let's get on the creeper. Sorry for the shaky. This, they're just trying to get you the best shots, man. We really can use some more light over here, but. All right, here we go. You see, how much is enough? You know, we don't know. We can't see inside the torque converter. So we, you know, it's all, it's all a judgment call wrenching on these things. Is it not? And there's what we got left in the bucket. You know, I was expecting that bucket just to get, just sucked empty real fast, but, oh, either that means that we've got some plugage in here or, well, maybe that's just the way it is. I mean, look at that steady stream. That steady stream there is right in the middle of your screen. That's coming out of the outlet. This bucket's about cashed. I say give it one more spin. Probably good. And I don't know, should we let the rest of that gallon just flow through and then call it good on flushing the torque converter and then move on to uh, flushing out the uh, the front pump? No, I know, let's strain the fluid through the cheesecloth and then pump it through the converter again and we'll spin the converter over at the beginning of it and then just let the rest of it just pump straight through. That way we're not breaking things up at the end of the bucket and then we don't have enough fluid left to flush all the stuff out that we broke up. And then we just gotta move on because we're never gonna get every single little piece of grid out. It's impossible, it's never gonna be perfect. This is not how to channel and old dogs. I'm not telling you how to do anything. I'm not telling anybody how to do anything. But if you're green, you're wet behind the ears, maybe you're 16, you're doing something like this for the first time, or maybe you're three doing it for the first time, I don't know. Nothing will ever be perfect and it's just chunks of metal. Your family is the most important thing. Don't ruin stuff on purpose, but don't be scared. Just have fun, get it done, and enjoy your car because life is fleeting. And now I'll get off my soapbox. And believe me, this is coming from a guy who has spent countless hours at a wire wheel painstakingly cleaning every single bolt on an entire car. Sometimes it's not worth it, sometimes it is. Preach it, Brother Freeman! Just a little bit left, and we could actually just stop it right now and then just pour the leftover through the cheesecloth. It's not really gonna make a difference to flush another two seconds. How's our oil pan level looking? You know, it's interesting because it's not as high after two gallons as it was in the previous <laughs> video because I'm telling you, every cycle we flush through this transmission, we end up with less and less transmission fluid left. And gee, I wonder why. I wonder where it's going. You know, it's probably actually not best to run the bottom inch of fluid through here now that I think about it because Looks like there's a little bit of sediment, if you will, at the very bottom that, uh, you know, would be good to put through the cheesecloth again. See that dark stuff? That's what I'm talking about. So we'll just pour this into our pan when we take it out, and then we'll put our cheesecloth on top of this bucket, like in the previous video, pour it through, and that way that stuff just gets another level of filtration. And there's a final level of filtration that we'll do at the very end before we put this transmission fluid back in because when this is all done, the transmission fluid we're gonna drive the car with is actually gonna be the stuff we're pumping, but we're going through some, there's a final filtration step that'll make that it usable. Yeah, I'm just waiting for this residual fluid, if you will, to finish draining, you can hear it dripping into the pan. 
I don't want to pull a pan out now and then we make more mess on the floor. While I wait for that, I'll set up the cheesecloth. And just like in the previous video, changing the cheesecloth after every two gallon cycle. And this stuff is cheap. Everything I'm using here to do this, it's all linked in the video description. So if you ever, if you're actually doing stuff like this and you need the, uh, this stuff, I've done, I've done all the arm play for you. It's all right there. There is actually improvements to this transmission flush system that I know I want to make. That's something I'm going to work out off camera at a later date and then I'll probably put an update in the video description of this video. Or maybe on the Freeman's Garage Extra channel I'll make a, a video talking about what I would have done differently. Maybe that will help some people. Maybe, maybe not. Oh yeah, we don't have to drop off the edge of that plywood anymore. And right now we're, you know, we're kind of going through trials and tribulations of uh, doing this flush. So as soon as we're done with this torque converter here, as soon as we're happy with it, then we're gonna blitzkrieg through flushing the pump and whatnot so that we can get to, uh, we can get to uh, hooking up our linkage for our valve body and bolting our valve body back in place, getting the pan on, getting the fluid in, and so we can fire this engine up and push the push buttons on the dashboard finally and see if uh, we hear a clunk and we get some uh, turnage in the rear because that would mean we are danger close to test driving this car out on the road and like I said in the previous video do this at your neighbor's house. Or did I say at your friend's house? Well, yeah, but I do remember telling you to watch the bottom here because I can't see. If we're overflowing on the backside, say something, and you didn't say something. Boy, that is pretty dark. I don't see chunks of anything, but I think spinning that converter over really did do something, though. It looks like maybe a little layer of stuff in the bottom of the pan. You know, I can say one nice thing about all these transmission videos on this car so far is that although either all the dark fluid that was originally in it was from the crazy amount of sludge that was in it, or possibly it was burnt clutch discs, we don't know, we'll find out, <laughs> I'm sure, when we try to drive the thing. I haven't seen any metal shavings, so that's good. This does definitely look different than it did before spinning the converter over. It's gritty. I don't, I don't think that's there's any metal. I think that's just grimy carcinogenic grit. It's got a little bit different smell to it too, so we definitely did something. And that's what the cheesecloth looks like. And that black stuff was that last stuff that came out of the pan. Now, from the hoses, Dragging on the floor there and then getting in the pan. Possible. That's where some of that debris came from, but I doubt it because it happened in the previous video. Who is anybody keeping a count in the comments of how many times I say previous video? But in the previous video, yeah, it wasn't like that. So we're calling that torque converter gunk. And that's what our cheesecloth strain fluid looks like after that flush. This is pretty cool. But yeah, I, I say we are done turning the torque converter over. I call, it was a success. That was amazing. So let's just run this bucket through the torque converter one more time and see what happens. In fact, I'm kind of, I'm thinking about running, maybe we should run this bucket. Maybe we should clean the black pan out, pour the bucket in there, and then pour it back through another layer of cheesecloth. Actually, let's do that just for fun. But my point is, is let's just flush the torque converter out at least one more time or until we're satisfied. And then we move on to the pump and then valve body goes in and this is good. I'm really happy to see all that debris come out. And I want the legend of the Rambler and all the other vehiculars here on the channel to continue on. Okay, that's clean, would you agree? Boy, it seems like we've ended up with even less 
in this bucket this time. Yeah, maybe not. Might be an optical illusion. Optical illusion. Now oh, look at all this that's settled on the bottom. Might as well just wipe that out, huh? Because I, I got I to tell you, yeah, this is a reason to stick around to the end of this video, or, well, and for future videos and to subscribe and do all that stuff because at least make sure you come back because we're going to run this through a fuel filter at the very end and then drive the car with it in the transmission, right? Well, who knows what's going to happen because uh, uh, I'm actually kind of curious if that's even a good idea with because this is pretty bad even straight into the cheesecloth. But we'll run it through a fuel filter at the very end. That's what we'll do, okay? And we'll see if it gets nice, bright, red, pink again. I don't know, we'll find out what happens because like I said, this stuff is a little bit more Joe Dierte than I thought, hey, it would be a. But not a single thing on this project has gone the way that I thought it would. So it's kind of par for the course, right? And we did learn something new because now we know that if you let this stuff sit for a little bit, instead of just rushing and dumping and pumping again real fast, if you let it sit for a little bit, a lot of the junk will settle down to the bottom and then you can wipe it out. Although, isn't that, you can just keep filtering it and that would do that, same thing, but catch a fallen star. Let's see what's in here after a second strain. Oh, that's a lot cleaner. There's nothing in there. And you know what, think about it now, I wish that I had a couple extra quarts of transmission fluid to replace what we've lost, but when I bought the transmission fluid, I bought everything they had, cleared them out. Okay, we got power to the pump. A Little bit less than two gallons here, right? So now's the time to put in the comments how long you think it's gonna take to pump it through the converter. I'm gonna say 30 minutes flat and I'm actually gonna stop watch this. That's almost nothing now, looking pretty good. But I'm gonna run it one more time, lickety split, and if it comes out clean, I'll see you after the first pump on the front pump. Cause we're not counting what we did in the previous video on the front pump, not counting that. Just start over, at least three pumps, I'll see you after the first one, if that goes well. So I was almost done with all the flushing and about to bring you in for an update. And I ran out of time, had to shut it down and drive all the way to Temple, Texas for a child sporting event. And I just got home. It's 10 o'clock at night and I walk inside Freeman's garage Uh, what in the world? I already built a little dam. I just came in here to throw some work lights on the charger and then was going to go to bed to be out here between 5 and 7 tomorrow morning. And it's a good thing... I came out here because this right here probably would be outside the door by tomorrow morning. But hey, isn't ATF mostly detergent? Ay ay ay. Now I triple checked before I left 
that the drip pan was underneath there properly. I'll soak into that box I need. But yeah, I double checked that it was and I mean it, it is, the thing is is that I made a major bonehead move, or as they would have said in the old days, a boner, you know, a blooper on a radio program or a television program in the early days of television. I had cracked that fitting to see if I could get air to escape because I was having major air issues. And yeah, I didn't tighten it down before I left. And look, that $40 of transmission fluid, yeah, that's it's all on the floor, my friend. It's $40 on the floor there. 40 bones, 40 smackers, 40 simoleons, 40 clams. It's one of those things that... I could cut out and you'd never know about it. Well, you'd probably notice the giant stain on the floor. But this is reality programming. It happened. And so I'll be up at 5 o'clock in the morning by 7 a.m. I guess I'll have 40 more dollars in transmission fluid. Major boner. Don't make the same mistake I did. A huge waste of money and a huge waste of everyone's time. Well, you might be entertained by this, actually. I'll see you in the manana. Is this not just the dumbest thing you've ever seen? Got fluid though. I'm still reeling, if you will, over the uh, blunder. But the thing is, is, you know, maybe, maybe leaving it in the video will help one person. If I could save just one child. Who do I think I am, Mother Teresa? And last night I did mention that I almost had all the pumping done when I had left for the uh, sporting event. I was partially through flushing the front pump for the second time, and I didn't bring you in for the first time after straining it through the cheesecloth because it was uneventful. <laughs> Wasn't really much to show you. Oh, well, I'm gonna step out onto Rikers Island here. Now there is a couple inches of fluid left in this bucket and we're not just gonna pour it on the floor and just get rid of it and then just, you know, use our two fresh gallons. Which on one hand you would say that could make sense because you got two fresh gallons, why mix it with fluid that you contaminated even though you said you were gonna make it usable anyways. But the thing is, is Remember, we're going to lose some, so we're going to want that, and that's money, and also, it doesn't matter how much we flush this thing, if we don't take the transmission out of the car and take every single little piece apart and clean it, there's always going to be fluid in there. And if you've been curious about why I don't just pull the transmission and tear it apart on the bench and clean it that way, or just go ahead and rebuild it is because on this car, because of the torque tube situation, you uh, basically have to take the rear end and the whole, the whole rear suspension out. Now you could pull the engine out of this thing in two seconds flat, but you still gotta unbolt the torque tube and separate the transmission, the tail shaft of the transmission from the torque tube, and you're never gonna get it back together with it not leaking, basically. So you would be in for a wild ride and it would be fairly costly. If your childhood consisted of the Great Depression followed by World War II, you would not waste a single drop of this. Unless you were a hippies kid. Relax, I'm just kidding. I'm not that square. Although the, the crew cut may say otherwise, but Give me some time and I'll have the other hair the, the other hair back. There is some fluid that came out of the pump outlet that's in the pan under the car. And the buckets up to there 
and I'm not sure exactly how much is on the floor. So the second gallon that I bought this morning, I'm not going to put it in here because it's possible that after pumping will end up overfilling the pan. All right, this disaster has drug on for way too long. So let's just hurry up and get this pumping going here. So we've got between the bucket and the lines and what could be in the transmission and in the pan under the car, call that one to two gallons that we're gonna finish our pumping with here. And I bet when we've got the engine running and we're cycling the transmission through its gears and we're checking the transmission fluid, we are most likely, I'd say 99%, we're gonna be needing to crack that second gallon. Well, 99.9% and topping off our fluid level. Wouldn't it be nice if we were done with all this already? Wouldn't it be nice if we were done flushing our transmission? We could shift together. There was a ton of air in the lines. You can still see some over in the, the clear line. And fluid was barely coming out the outlet tube of the pump. By raising these hoses, the air has been able to escape. And then the flow increased. See, well, now that air is going backwards. There you go. I hope you can see that. All those air bubbles are now are making their way towards the transmission. And of course, with the rubber line, I can't see where the air bubbles are in there. I can only see the air bubbles in the clear line. Look at how much fluid is coming out of the pump outlet tube. That biggest tube with the biggest hose on it, okay, that's the pump inlet tube. And then that second biggest tube with no hose on it, where you see that steady drip coming out, that's our pump outlet tube. I mean, it's a steady stream, but it's not as heavy of a stream as it was coming out of the converter outlet tube. Now, why is that? When I gently put a screwdriver up in the outlet tube of the, of the uh, pump, it's not just a wide open hole like it is when you stick a screwdriver in the outlet tube of the converter. In the outlet tube of the pump, it with the screwdriver in there, it feels like there's some sort of a curve or a corner or a baffle or maybe a screen or something in there. I could be missing it, but in the service manual, I don't see a screen or anything there in, in the illustrations where that outlet tube meets the, the case. I don't see anything. My point is that I don't know if that's supposed to be how much should be coming out right now. Or if it's supposed to be, you know, the, the outlet tube is big. I don't know if it's supposed to be the Niagara Falls coming out of there or not. If you walk to the public library and you sign in for 15 minutes of computer use and you search the World Wide Web, I don't know if it's just me, but I can't find this information. I don't think it's out there. There's an air bubble in the line right at the bucket. That's definitely slowing us down. I just wish I could just get all this air out at once. Let's see if the air bubble survives going through the pump. Yeah, there it is coming out in pieces and then reforming just like the T2 and Terminator. Get out of here, pesky air bubble. Look, there it is. Right by the zip tie. Just sitting there. There it is. It's going over the screwdriver. You know, you would think, wouldn't you, that all the air, if not most of it, would make its way through the transmission and out the outlet tube? Although I suppose it gets trapped up high, right? But there's no telling. It seems to be a little bit better with getting that air bubble out, but I really wonder if that's clogged or not in there. Hey, what, what if it is and we kill the transmission, you know? 
But what if, what if, what if, right? Maybe the transmission's already been killed and that's what did it. You see, we're like Little Richard. Okay, I don't mean to compare to Little Richard, but we're kind of like Little Richard. We're one of the first rock and rollers on the scene. At this very moment, there is no one to go to all the answers for. There's no one to idolize. There's no one to look at and see how we're supposed to do things. Who the heck knows how much fluid's supposed to be coming out of that? Not me. There's no one here that can tell me that. So, judgment call. We're what you call a pioneer in their field. We gotta finish this bucket and do it probably one more time, right? So, this is gonna take forever at this pace. So, kick back, fire up the microwave oven. We're gonna make this go by lickety split in video time, and I'm gonna be putting down kitty litter and thinking in my head about how we could maybe try to find out if we could unclog that or find out if it's clogged. I would be lying to you if I tried to tell you that I'm not a little bit embarrassed right now. And it's almost 90 degrees and there's actually some rain coming in, so it's also humid. <laughs> yeah, wah. Oh, that's like on ice. <laughs> Just nothing but transmission fluid under it. I have a feeling I'm gonna be posting this video for you at midnight. Boy, I can't wait to sit down though and do a after action review on this because there's a lot I learned and a lot of things I would do differently. Partially because of the confined space. But you know what? If this transmission works in a little bit here, I will totally redeem myself. So I got those last two flushes done. And I did an extra cheese clothing at the end. And this is our this is the fluid now. I got, I got the fitting switch back around. I got the fuel filter that came with our fuel pump back on here that we were using at first in the previous video. So that's all the extra cheesecloth strain transmission fluid, pumping it through that fuel filter and into this bucket. And I think I ruined my new boots, but they're called work boots for a reason, aren't they? Oh, come on, there we go, we're moving the air. Air is the enemy. So once we've ran all this fluid through this fuel filter, it'll be usable in our transmission. Okay, we'll just let this do its thing. And you and I, let's prepare. Well, let's not prepare, let's just get the valve body in. It's, it's about time. There were some spiders under here, which means this has been sitting, sitting for too long. I swear, never again, the hose fell out of the bucket. It just never, it's just not, it's never ending. Okay, there we go. That hose fell out, and then we got air in there again. But now we're all propped up. We're good, I swear. Never again. All right, back to the valve body. There's our new gasket, and here is our outlet tube for our torque converter, which normally is stuck up inside the transmission with those other tubes, but it came out upon removal of the valve body, and these witness marks here show me that this was in there like that. And, it's been a long day, so I don't recall, or a long couple days, I don't recall, did I show you that I put this in line with our rubber hoses under the car for our pumping to size down? And I'm thinking what we're gonna do is we'll just put, I have this in the valve body when we put the valve body up in the place, and maybe uh, when we feel this slide into its hole, into its home, that'll help us line up our other tubes. And I don't recall a couple videos ago when we first attempted to put the valve body back in the transmission after refurbishing it. I, yeah, I don't recall if I showed you this or not, but this linkage I had on backwards. And I don't recall if this is backwards or the proper way or not. It might have to be going this way. So we're going to find that out in a second when we go underneath and install this. And there's witness marks right here that show me that this clip is going to go on like this. 
But of course, we have to connect that inside the transmission case to the linkage that, well, that is our shifter arm that hangs out on the outside of the transmission and is connected to our buttons via a cable. And there's another clip like this, it's underneath the car, that will go here because this is where our cable connects to that runs underneath the hood to the throttle linkage on the carburetor. So we're almost done with our filtration, our final filtration. And I was hoping that it would be shiny and pinkish red. Oh, come on! This air! Must be because the hose, end of this hose got exposed again when it was low while we were over there gabbing about the V-body. Okay, got that protected from debris and I know this hose is going to make a little bit of a mess but gosh darn it we need this pan under here though let's get this valve body put in and test this transmission we also have our oil tubes to put back into place those go we push those into place after the valve body is back in place and they will go into some of these holes is where they get pushed into our screen slash filter side is the bottom and then this side's the top you can see the mating surfaces where we bolt in the place let's do it man now i remember why i put that plywood under here it was just to set the valve body on something clean and that was what two videos ago we got the poor man's creeper just wiping off the mating surfaces for the valve body so that we're not bolting it down onto a thick layer of oil. Is our linkage on backwards or not? That's the thing. Okay, well you're not going to believe this. I had that completely flipped around backwards actually. This needs to go this way. Not that way, and I believe the pointy end goes down. And I had our little clips mixed up too. Okay, yeah, it, ha it has to point down. Oh gosh. Okay, where's the other clip? So we got that attached. What you can see is attached to our linkage on the outside. And we got this cable here that we have to attach that's connected to our buttons on our dashboard and so that's gonna go I believe that's right I think it's gonna go here and then that right there is gonna go here that's the cable that goes up to our throttle linkage on the carburetor gosh is that right Wait, no, that can't be right, can it? Okay, ordinarily I would say that you're not going to believe this, but based off of how this video has gone so far, I think you would believe it. I just spent a very, very long time trying to figure out the clips and I was thinking, is there a third clip? It seems like there, there's got to be a third clip. But no, no, there's no third clip. That's ridiculous. Finally, after probably a half an hour, I get out from under the car and I go look and... Oh, here's a third clip. I still don't think that this is going to go very easily. I'm thinking we want this converter outlet tube in place because we're gonna want wiggle room because i gotta tell you right now i'm not very confident that i can even get that cable connected that's the crazy thing uh gosh what if we went well wait a second that doesn't that doesn't even make sense to me god dang it okay i think we got that that linkage in place. All right, hold on here. We gotta go no washer. Oh, 
come on. This is such a disaster. What is going on? It's like nothing is. What the? Is this the same transmission? Did we switch transmissions? Okay, yeah, we have no linkage connected. Oh, great, things are falling apart. Where'd that one bolt go? Into the oil pan? Okay, I think we got our shift linkage together. We do. Uh-oh. What happened to it? Oh, no. Oh, I think it just popped out because the, maybe because the valve body's not up in place. All the way. Okay, but now there's the seemingly impossible task of attaching our cable that goes to the carburetor. Well, this is this is difficult enough when you can see what you're doing. And you know, one reason why I want to get this over with and just start driving this car is the more time I spend underneath it, the more rust I find. And I don't want to see it. Ow! Ah, oh, just smack my beak on the exhaust clamp. Ow! Oh. Oh, no, I don't think it's gonna go up any higher. Just where'd that bolt go? Let me just throw this back in loosely for safety sakes. Oh, where'd the clip go? Where is it? I'm sorry, I don't mean to be negative, but if we get this in, I think it's going to be luck that does it. Gosh, how the heck am I ever going to line this up? It's probably an hour later. I just could not get this stuff to go into place. And then I was dropping everything. The valve body wouldn't even bolt into place. Nothing would, the threads wouldn't take. Everything was a mess. Everything was falling. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah, you, uh, it wasn't pretty, you didn't want to see it. But the valve body is bolted in place and snug down, and all the linkage up in there is connected. And boy, did that take a long time. See that up in there? <laughs> That's for the cable that goes to the throttle linkage. And then the shift linkage is on top. But I know what you're saying. Freeman, why did you not take us with in that... Uh, that painful journey, well, it took a really long time. And also, check this out. This is, this is fascinating. You're gonna, you're gonna get a kick out of this. So I think maybe the shift linkage is on upside down because, watch this. You hear that? So, I don't know if it's actually, I don't know if it's, if it's actually upside down. I us I can pop it back in, but the, the challenge is, is, you know, in the Kmart parking lot, or maybe you swung in the Sambos, for some pancakes and you go to leave and your linkage falls apart and then you're, you're dropping the transmission pan in the parking lot. Oh, the whole thing just fell apart. Oh. oh man. I'm telling you, man. It's, it's so weird. I'm putting stuff back together the way it was, but it doesn't work. Oh! Wait a minute. Wait. No. See, this is the challenge with things, parts sitting around forever. You don't rem you forget about things. Oh! Wait, so I had this on right. Oh, man, I'm stupid. Yeah, the third clip goes on this end. 
Boy, I should delete this part too. I don't want you to see this. Wait, but that's going to make it even harder to get back on. <laughs> Why? I'm telling you, when the rambler that's sitting outside comes in and that project starts, you know, I really haven't even looked at the car. If it's got the same engine, same transmission, all that stuff, then we're going to have a ball. We're going to do everything ten times as fast. You can feel my stomach. It's empty. My grandmother, she grew up in a house where if you were hungry, drink a glass of water. That's what she told me once. And she made me a sandwich and I was still hungry. And she said, drink a glass of water and your stomach will feel full. I think that was a very polite way of saying, suck it up, you wuss. <laughs> okay, well, I'm putting that clip halfway on. Well, clips, another clip's about to fall in my eyeball. Ah! I don't know if that's going to be a good idea or not, but we got to get on our tubes. There we go. Are you on our tubes? I think so. Where did I put the hardware? Quick. So I just want you to know that I was planning on this video being done by now. But here we are. I believe we're in our tubes. I didn't mean we are inner tubes. I meant I believe we are in our tubes. Oh, and this linkage fell in the place. Oh, he says. Oh, that's kind of... Oh, nice. There we go. Oh! Oh! Oh, I can hear footsteps. I think my daughter is about to come flying through this garage door. Why haven't we ate yet? <laughs> it's a pizza night. Okay. Where'd that clip go that fell on me? Oh, don't tell me it disappeared into the... Oh, it was on, it was sitting on my ear. Did you know that? It's just amazing how long this took the first time around and now I'm just flying through it. And I know the trick to get our cable up here to get in the place or one of the tricks is you got to get it lined up Ooh, see, oh, just see, just fell into place. That's amazing. Except for I gotta pop it out to get this, so it's this clip in there. You get it in the position, starting to slide in, and it's not gonna wanna go all the way. You need to then bolt the valve body down all the way, and then it will fall all the way into place. Now, now I'm not in a bad mood anymore. Except for in that previous video, I told you in one to three days, this would all be done. It's after, I think it's after eight o'clock on the third day. <laughs> and I don't remember what the torque spec is. It's eight or nine foot pounds, but it doesn't matter for us because we don't have a torque wrench here that goes that low. And also, remember I was trying to make the mating surfaces all clean and neat. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that didn't work out. Well, if we can wrap this up here, I'm gonna try to get this video to you tonight, skis. Although when you think you've got five hours of post-production work to do, well, for me anyways, you know, it usually ends up being 10. All right, hopefully we do not warp the valve body by over tightening it. So I'm just gonna snug that, call it good. Must be a little rough on our linkage. Oh, 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 oh man. All right, now let's just put the bolt in for our cable that goes to our buttons, if I can find it. Here it is, this little guy here with this little washer. Jesus, everything's fighting me. Drop that in the transmission fluid. Right. Huh? Left or right? Left. Why? What is it? 
Rotini? Oh, I could eat that. Good choice. Looks like somebody's cooking for me. Some kids don't know how to cook. All they use is the microwave oven. Not my kid. Oh wait, is that too tight? I don't think it matters. All right, let's test it out. Just our buttons real quick. So we're sitting in here and I don't know what we're in right now, but let's just say we wanted to go in reverse. Wow, that clicked. Well, let's say we want to go to neutral, which is also the start button. <laughs> See if you push down all the way, that's for start. Wow, okay, let's go to low. Oh, ho, ho. let's go to D1, D2, holy cow, it works, okay, let's go neutral, because we're going to want to be there for when we start, we're getting close, I can't believe it, we're getting close, I think I had dunked my, the back of my head in the transmission fluid at some point, I have to take that weekly shower, we gotta get the tubes on, our oil tubes. I remember where these go. This one goes in the second hole from the screen that looks like the state of Utah. For the life of me here, I can't think of what is Utah's nickname. It's not the Silver State, that's Nevada. It is, gosh, what is it? That's all we need is another delay. There we go. Do we dare tap these? Utah. Come on, what is the state nickname? There we have it. The oil tubes are all in place. And now let's put the pan on, put some fluid in, and let's fire this thing up and test out this transmission. It's finally about time to find out if this transmission is junk or if it's not junk. Oh, boy, that was profound. But hey, it's a long, long road from which there is no return. And while we're on our way there, why not share? But, you know, the load doesn't weigh me down at all because he ain't heavy. He's my rambler. I probably shouldn't talk about my rambler being heavy when I still have to go underneath it. Oh, that's nice. The wheels on the floor jack are going to leave a trail of transmission fluid. Unless I can get, get it off the wheels. If you remember back from the first videos of this transmission debacle, we have to jack the transmission up. It's the only way we can get the transmission pan bolts in and out. And we're going to do it from the driver's side, which is a more difficult side to, to do it on. But the thing is, is uh, there's we're not going to push and slosh the jack through even more transmission fluid on the passenger side. There's just too much junk in the way over there anyways. Oh yeah, that's right, the muffler. It's all, you know, the exhaust, the exhaust always gets in the way of everything. You know, I got a feeling that in the near future, over on the Freeman's Garage Extra channel, you will be seeing a garage floor degreaser test video or something. I'm sure we'll probably be scrubbing this garage floor over there on that channel and seeing if we can find a product that actually works worth a, a darn. Pushing the transmission into the floor yet? That's probably good. Just a final wipe down. And the pan only goes on a certain way. I just have to hope we didn't uh, make the gasket fall out of place. 
in the front there, which we'll be able to easily check that because if our holes in our pan don't line up the holes in the gasket, then uh, yeah, then we know. Alright, let's check those front holes before we put more or the rest of the bolts in. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, it still isn't easy even with the transmission jack down. Well, that one didn't want to go in. Hopefully that will decide to line up here in a second. We'll go back to it. I can see Bo Diddley squat. Hardly anything. Makes a guy want to notch out this cross member. There we go, it lined up. This one bolt here doesn't want to go in all the way very easily. Where are you? Threads are a little bit jacked up. And so I'm thinking there must be a little, must be a hole where the threads are a little bit jacked up. So let's just try to find out which one that was and just match it up. Because the last thing we want to do is be forcing things into an aluminum case. Oh, and there it is. Interesting. And there were four of these bolts with this Phillips head. I was trying to put those one in each corner just for OCD sakes, but doesn't matter now. One's right there. Although this one here is kind of doing it too because yeah, the other ones aren't. Okay, here, let's take this out. And let's just swap with this one here. So there, there's no point in rushing at the end here and hammering things that aren't fitting properly into aluminum, right? And heaven forbid this pan has to come off again. <laughs> or, well, you know, one day it'll come off again anyways, right? After another however many thousands of miles in service. Yeah, we don't want things to uh, be all stripped out. That's not working either. And my four Phillips in the corners, my four corners thing is completely out the window now. Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico, Utah. The four corners. And Utah, what is the name? What is the nickname? It's not the Arches State, is it? That doesn't sound right. State, state of Great Arches? No. Okay, is this the bolt or is it the hole? I'm still trying to figure it out. Which bolt's going to work in this corner here. And I'm looking up at that little teeny tiny bolt with that little washer that connects our um, shift linkage cable. And uh, I'm wondering, you know, maybe a guy should put some Loctite on that. Oh, come on, nothing's... Oh. Oh, I think we got it. No. Oh, come on. Well, what the... All right, well, now I'm starting to get... A little bit concerned here because nothing's working. Oh, I'm trying all the bolts. If nothing works here, we're going to take the pan back off so that we can inspect this hole. And I suppose when we do that, that's when we'll get the gasket dirty and all that kind of stuff. And of course it's a corner, you know. Those are the worst ones to have to deal with leaks. I'm going to try all the bolts until I find one that goes in here. And if I don't find one that goes in here, well, then we'll have to try something else. I'm just afraid that this hole is stripped out. It doesn't look like it though from here. It might just need to be cleaned out. See, it should just go just easy like that. It shouldn't, it shouldn't have to take a bunch of finagling. I am days behind on this project. We just need to get this done. Need to find out if we got a good transmission or not. One bolt left. Uh-oh. That's not good. I'm just seeing if I can pick out any debris or anything. Ah. 
Back blast area all clear. Oh, a bunch of stuff came out. Oh gosh, I gotta get out of here, the vapors. Oh. Well, we got a stripped out hole. Come to think of it, in the first transmission video, isn't that the bolt that was sticking halfway out since 1975? Interesting. Well, I know this may seem crazy because we've had probably, we've got probably a 20% chance of the transmission working, right? Probably an 80% chance it was burnt up and that's why it was parked. We're gonna go back under there and we're gonna fix those threads. The odds just really keep stacking against us here. 